For our next task number three with the default route advertisement on R2, we want to unconditionally advertise default route and then verify reachability of R2 loopback interfaces from R3. So currently, although R3 has a default route that we saw earlier that is received from R1, R1 still doesn't know how to get to R2 loopback 1 through 3 because R2 currently will advertise a specific loopback 0. So what we're going to do is on R2, we're going to advertise a default route to R1 as well. And just to verify before we do that, if you're trying to ping 2001.2.2, which is R2 loopback1 address, and you can see you being, it's received a ICMP unreachable from R1. So that's because when you do show IPv6 route 2001.2.2, you can see the route is not found on R1. So now, to advertise the default route unconditionally from R2, we get into the routing process and then make sure you get under the address family IPv6. And the command that we want here is the default information. Originate. And if you want to conditionally advertise, then you need to attach the route map to condition based on existence of some other routes. But here, since we can do unconditional advertisement, we just press enter here. And then if we go back onto R1, you can see now if you do a show IP v6 route of that R2 loopback one, it's pointing towards or using the default route pointing towards R2. So now from R3, if you're trying to ping that same IP address, you can see the IP is reachable. Okay, so pretty straightforward from default route advertisement. For test number four with route filter, now we want to advertise R3 loopback 3 to R1, but we do not want to allow that route to reach R2. So we need to configure a route filter on R1 going towards R2 in the sense that we first need to advertise R3 loopback 3 interface. So let's hop on to R3 and then get under router ISIS LM and do a passive on loopback 3 and on R2, let's do a quick check and make sure R2 is currently receiving that route. You can see it right here, 1001.302, and that's a loopback 3, 1003.02, loopback 3 on R3. So now on R1, the way the route filter is done on the ISIS is a little different. It's not based on the a route filter and then direction that you want to configure on the based on the interface. But instead, it's going to be done by doing a redistribution from at the border router. And here we're going from level 1 to level 2. So under R1, for example, if you go under the router ISIS LM and then address family IPv6 unicast, you can see right here there's not really a distribute list command that you might anticipate to find under here. And that's because the, the route filter is done by redistribution. But everything else is pretty much the same as far as building a prefix list to allow routes. So here, let's go ahead and do IPv6 prefix list. Since we're going from the level one to level two, we want to specify that in the name, and then we want to deny, let me make sure there's no typo. I just want to copy that and then paste. And then we want to allow everything else. So permit zero less than 128. Okay, and then we have to get under the router, ISIS LM at this family IPv6 unicast, and then with the redistribute command, we're going to go from ISS level 1 to ISS level 2. So ISIS level 1 into level 2, and here is the distribute list command. And then we attached a prefix list that we configured previously to that. Okay, and if you do show IPv6 prefix list detail, and we already got the hit count for both. And now if you hop onto R2 and do show IPv6 route IS one more time, you can see that route of the uh, R3 loopback 3 has now disappeared from the routing table. And obviously right now from R2, if you're trying to ping R3 loopback 3, which is 2001, 3023. You can see it said it came back and said there's no valid route to that destination. Okay, so that's how you achieve the route filter at the border router. 
Okay, so moving on to our next task, task number five with route leak. And we want to configure R1 to advertise R2 loopback zero to R3 along with the default route. So if you remember, right now R3, if you show IPv6 route, all it's currently receiving is the R1 loopback interface and a default route. So now we want to leak in the sense that R2 loopback zero into a level one area so R3 can receive a more specific route. And this is something that you might want to do when you deal with multiple exits from level one area to level two, because the router inside the level one area, such as R3 in this example, has no concept of what's outside of its own level one area. So if it has a multiple exit route, all it sees is the multiple default route, and it's just gonna load balance out of that. So if you want to influence one path over the other, what you can do is to use the route leaking to make your level one routers prefer one exit over the other. Okay, although we do not have that scenario in our lab here, I'm just gonna show you how the route leaking can be achieved. So what we need to do is on R1 is to build another prefix list, so IP v6 prefix. And this time it's gonna be L2. They're gonna follow pretty much the same process as the route filter, but this time we're gonna go from level two to level one. Okay, so L2 to L1, and then all we need to permit is R2 loopback interface. And we know that if you look at the R1 routing table, the R2 loopback interface should be sitting right there in the routing table already, right here. Now we get under the router, ISISLM, address family, IPv6, unicast, and then we're gonna use the same redistribute command, but this time we're gonna go from level two into level one with a distribute list of looks like I have a typo right there let me fix that real quick so it should be L2 to L1 get back under the running process unicast there you go redistribute and then copy enter you show IP prefix list detail here L2 to L1 we got one hit count already so now if we go back to R3 up arrow and you can see in addition to the default route we are receiving now a route to RT loopback zero okay and you can see the route shows up as the IA which is the ISIS inter area routes since it's uh, coming from level 2 area and it's being advertised by R1. Okay, so now but this shouldn't change the fact that we should still be able to ping R2 loopback 0 from R3. It's just that we need to show IPv6 route on R3 to 2001.2. It should be using the more specific route instead of the default route. Okay, so next is our task number six, and that's our final task for this lab. So redistribution summarization, we want to redistribute our three loopback one and two with metric value of 100, but we are not allowed to configure the metric with the redistribute command. Okay, so let's deal with that and then we'll come back and look at the summary part of it. So on R3, since we only asked to redistribute loopback zero and one, we need to build a prefix list since we can't just blindly do a redistribute from connected. So we need to build a prefix list to control that. So we're going to use R3, I'll call it R3 loopback. And we're going to permit. Obviously you can add two separate permit command, one for each of these loopback. But since there are two contiguous slash 64 subnet, what we can do is to come up with a prefix list that includes both. And since it's two slash 64, it will become a single slash 63 to include both. That will be less than or equal 64. Okay, then we do a route map, connect it to ISIS, permit 10. We're gonna match IPv6, address, prefix, list of L3 loopback. And then since we're not allowed to specify the metrics as part of the redistribute command, we need to do it right here on the route map. So we can do a set and then we have matrix. And then we say we need it to set to 100. Okay, then we get under the router 
isis lm address family and then do a redistribute connected since those loopbacks are connected interface or subnet and we want to make sure that we want to redistribute that from connected to level one and then here we can specify the wrap map let me find that name and copy paste and there we have it I would do show IPv6 prefix list detail we hope to see some hit counts and we do two to be exact and that's for each of our loopback one and two and now if we get onto R1 and do show IPv6 route IS actually that doesn't look quite right here we have that's a loopback one that's a loopback two somehow loopback three came across but with the metrics of 10 so obviously it didn't match our route map because the, these two that match our route map came in as uh, 110 so we need to see where this one is coming from so let's go ahead and do a little bit of troubleshooting here maybe take away this redistribute connected command first the address family ip v6 and then do a no redistributed connected let's make sure those route is now gone oh that was done part of our earlier lab so i totally forgot my apologies so let's put that back with the redistribute command you can find it right there yeah that was done back in task i believe in the route folder right there advertise loopback 3 so that's why the loopback 3 already show up on the router r1 routing table okay so in addition to that we should now see r3 loopback 1 and 2 as well with the correct metrics that we specify or set under the route map so now from r2 we should be able to ping Let's actually do a show IPv6 route IS first. You can see only R2, since we have the R3 loopback 3 filter on R1, R2 only sees the R3 loopback 1 and 2, and that should be pingable from R2. So 3, 0, 0, 3, and 1, 3. Okay, so that is for redistribution. Next, we need to configure the smallest summary route on R1 to include R3 loopback 1 through 3, and then advertise it into level 2, and then verify that R2 can then reach R3 loopback 1 through 3. Okay, so to do that, under the, I think we're already under the routing process, address IPv6. So the command that we need is summary prefix. And since we are summarizing these loopbacks, which are 3 slash 64 subnet and they're contiguous and starts with 0. So what we can do is with the prefix 2001, 3, and then slash 62. Okay, and then we have to be explicit as far as what level or area level we want to advertise as summary route. And here we're going to advertise into level 2. And then if we do show IPv6 route ISIS, we can see that we now have a route point to null zero, although it's type IS right here with IS being ISS summary. And the metrics is uses the highest metrics. You can see it's combined with these three routes right here. So 110, 110, and 10. So it picks the highest metric and it's pointing out uh, to null zero. Okay, so now if we jump onto router two and then do a show IPv6 route ISIS. We can see that both of the more specific route to loopback one and two of R3 has now gone and been replaced with a single summary route with a slash 62. Okay, so now R2 should be able to reach loopback one through three. So we'll start off with loopback one, let's loopback two, and let's loopback three. Actually, loopback three is number two. There you go. You can see all those three loopbacks on R3 is now reachable from R2. So that completes our task number six. Now that we've gone through all the six tasks, you can see that there is a lot of similarity as far as the configuration when you compare to the ISIS in IPv4. And the only major difference is when you get under the routing process, you need to specify the address family IPv6. But other than that, as far as the interface configuration and how to enable ISIS in the interface, those pretty much stays the same. Okay, so that wraps up our video on IPv6 with ISIS. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labmiss.com, and I'll see you guys in the next video.